modifying some old Victor number two coil spring traps for fisher trapping. It's coming up. Okay, in this video, I want to show you how I'm taking some old Victor number no. two coil spring traps and I'm going to modify these to use for fisher trapping in Pennsylvania this coming season. The modifications I'm going to make to the number no. two coil spring trap will be is I'm going to modify the jaws and want to make them wider. I already had pieces made cut at my Amish machine shop. Those I will be bolting on. I don't have a welder, but they will get bolted fast onto the jaws on the outside, which still makes them uh, legal. They're still under the six and a half inch jaw spread for Pennsylvania. The other modification will be across the base and we're going to put a base plate that gives me a center support or attachment for my chain. Again, these will be drilled and bolted on. The reason for the base plates, hopefully you can see, but as you can see this base plate, and it's the only one I saw so far, has a big bow in her. By putting a base plate on there, and there it gives you how much that is bowed, I'll use my press and press that out before I put the base plate, fasten it on there to help uh, strengthen that. But it sure did bend it. So that's the other reason for base plates. Fisher are notoriously strong by using last year the Sleepy Creek number no. four double long spring that trap itself weighs a couple pounds whereas these old Victor number no. two square jaws uh, they're not that heavy to start with so this is the reason for the modifications and I would do the jaws anyhow, even if the base plate was a lot, was thicker on those number twos. But I want the jaws to have a wider holding area on the foot. So that it doesn't cause damage if I want to release or have to release an animal. So we'll get on with, there's going to be a lot of uh, drilling and so forth. I want to do that off camera will show you putting the pieces, the base plate on, bolting it on, bolting the uh, modifications onto the jaws. But I'm not going to bore you with the drilling that's involved. The jaw modification, I place it where I need it. I drilled the piece first by laying them on the jaws and drilling those holes. Then with two vice grip pliers, I hold that in place and take it to the drill and drill down through the trap jaws. And now all we'll do is put two bolts in, uh, lock nuts on them, and uh, the, the one jaw will be all done. So here I have the one modification done on the jaw to widen it. I use a piece of my steel in between the jaws which allows me to press the jaw piece against that and it's flush with the trap jaw. The pieces of steel going onto the trap jaw when they're sheared off at the machine shop 
they're square but their edges are rough and pointy so I take that prior to doing anything and I round those ends off and also across this way on the top of them to take those sharp edges off of those pieces so it doesn't hurt the animal's foot okay we have the jaw modifications done both pieces of extra steel has been added to increase the jaw width bolted fast now we're going to turn our attention to putting the base plate on the bottom now we have the base plate on bolted fast so give us a center swivel or chain probably one other item I'm going to do on these number two coil springs is I'm going to put the pit pan system on which gives you an easier way to adjust your pan tension I don't have them here at the present but uh, that I'll do as another video down the line. So this is something you can use rainy days. So it's a good day to work on traps. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it gave you some information that if you don't have a welder, there is ways to do modifications on your traps. So if you like our videos I appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel tell a friend give us a thumbs up leave comment and if you want to learn more on trapping systems and trapping tips start now by hitting the round subscribe button so you don't miss anything thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time